Yeah, so so let's um, uh, let's open our hearts and our minds to include all who are all who are here with us today um, in all of the uh, the rich rootedness in our um, and who we are in the, in the uh, diversity of who we are, in the uniqueness of who each one of us is, um, our, uh, our gender expression, our, our racial roots, our ethnic roots, our religious roots, um, ancestral connections, uh, our personal histories, our, our uh, sexual orientation, and um, the joys and sorrows of how our life has unfolded, our health, whatever that health uh, reality may be, visible and invisible disabilities, um, but grateful that we are here. We have enough health to be present uh, in, this, in this Zoom room together. And um, so honoring, appreciating, um, opening to uh, welcoming all of who we are and uh, whatever I've not named is um, not because it's not welcome. And, and uh, this, this openness is really uh, an expression, a, um, a manifestation of the parami of equanimity, which is the final parami the last parami, and we're, we're, we've completed the, uh, the series today uh, of equanimity, um, with equanimity, and, uh, and it's, you know, it, it, equanimity is not a, something that is really talked about very much. Um, it's not a, for, for those who are not Buddhist, or without, those who don't have a spiritual practice. It's it's not something that's really talked about very much. This this just this sense of um, evenness of mind, of of non-reactivity, of openness. Um, it's uh, it may not be the most um, I don't know glamorous of the parami, uh, generosity, compassion, maybe may uh, parami that you know perfections of the heart that that come to mind more readily but this this evenness of mind and um, deep acceptance is is really a culmination and is supported by all the other parami as well um, so it's a deep acceptance of ourselves um, first of all and of others, a deep acceptance of our circumstances. So this parami for me has certainly been exercised over this past week as you know, news has come in of the, um, how the Omicron variant has, has put more uncertainty into the picture of, um, what we can do, what we can't do. So this, this capacity to have a, this quality of evenness, whatever the circumstances, whether it's up or down, uh, whether it's pleasant or un, unpleasant. And, and this evenness of mind, this uh, balance, <clears throat> The, uh, the translation that 
that Bhikkhu Analyu often uses is equipoise. Um, so this gives really a, a sense of this balance. Um, equip, equipoise, equanimity. Um, the, there's a um, There's a translation uh, of equanimity, which is a different from a different Pali word, um, tatra ma, uh, ma, maja, uh, I'm not remembering it, maja tata. Uh, I, I for, forgive me, I um, I won't repeat my efforts, but it the English translation is standing in the midst of all this. Um, and um, so Whereas Upeka, uh, the, the more commonly used Pali word has, has the, the implication of looking over. So there's a, a sense of a, a view which incorporates and includes everything. Whereas Tatra Maja Tata, I said it again, even though I said I wouldn't, um, standing in the midst of all this, has has this sense of being that here I am and I'm in the midst of it all and I am not getting pushed and pulled that I'm keeping my sense of groundedness in the midst of all this whatever it is all this whatever this mess is of um, I I I always, my mind always gets pulled back to a scene, you know, oft repeated when I was a single mom standing in the kitchen, you know, kids, whatever, acting out, crying, and uh, trying to prepare some food, and, you know, things are kind of a mess, and it feels overwhelming, and, and somehow finding a sense of balance and presence, uh, and responding without reacting. So responding with out of kindness, responding with, with calmness uh, and an understanding and uh, acceptance of whatever it is that's, that's happening. So um, standing in the midst of all this. So, um, so yeah, so it's rooted in a deep insight into impermanence, knowing that whatever it is, it will change. It's, it's, not, it's not always gonna be like this. It doesn't mean that we're grasping for things to become a certain way, but, but there's a, a kind of a breathing in of, yes, this is difficult right now and it's unfolding, it will pass. Um, and a trust, uh, a trust in our own capacity or a trust in another's capacity or whoever it is that we are bringing equanimity into the space that we are sharing together with this person um, to pass through whatever is happening. So there's a certain respect in that, in that trust and respect that, yes, I know you are able, I know I am able to be with this, to, to and, and it, you can see that, that one of those beautiful parami of patience um, comes up in this, uh, in this reflection. Um, and also perspective. Um, there's a uh, uh, Bikuni, Bikuni Ananda Bodhi talks about equanimity as having perspective. And I often think about, uh, about equanimity as perspective, a, a kind of a zooming out um, that, uh, that it's all passing show that that these things have happened before and they will happen again. Um, it's, I don't need to try to fix it. Uh, there's no point in trying to blame. 
it's or take sides or panic or grasp or reject that everything's arising from from causes and conditions there's a, a beautiful uh quote that um Dear Veronique, who's a member of uh, this community, gave me this week. Um, it's from Heather Sundberg, who's a teacher from Spirit Rock, uh, that, that she recites um, a kind of a, a verse to remind her of the mind of equanimity. And it goes like this. All things arise and pass away, and they aren't I or mine. May I trust in the unfolding of life. May I hold joys and sorrows with equanimity and balance, wisdom and compassion. All things arise and pass away. And they aren't I or mine. May I trust in the unfolding of life. May I hold joys and sorrows with equanimity and balance, wisdom and compassion. So this isn't indifference. This isn't a tuning out. There is sometimes uh, when we talk about equanimity, we talk about it as the spiritually neutral feeling. So in, when we talk about feeling tones, uh, Vedna, it's, uh, it's another teaching that um, we've reflected on together uh, in the past and um, very important teaching, recognizing that feeling tones arise with every moment of experience. And, and there, there are what are called sensory feeling tones that arise with every sensory experience. And there are also spiritual feeling tones um, or non-worldly, unworldly feeling tones. So they're not connected to uh, the, the senses, but they're more inner experiences, pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral. And, um, and the neutral feeling tone is, is, uh, is equanimity. So in the sensory sphere of feeling tones, the, the reactivity that can come around neutral feeling tones is, uh, is tuning out indifference, um, ignorance, and, um, and so, because, because it's not, it doesn't grab you the way pleasant sensory experiences and unpleasant sensory experiences grab your attention. Neutral is like, it's just there. Um, and, and, and neutral, spiritual or unworldly feeling tones. Um, also, it's not, it's, it's not that pleasant of, you know, joy or bliss or loving kindness or, or the unpleasant that might come with being with painful experiences and, and seeing, seeing them for what they are, the insight that may be accompanied with painful uh, vedna, unworldly vedna. So it, equanimity It's, it does co-arise with, with a very subtle kind of joy of, um, of feeling connected without being attached. It's, uh, it's a little hard to kind of put words on. Um, but there's not, it, it, it's, a, it's a quality of freedom. Uh, and there's not grasping or aversion. It, it arises with insight. Um, B 
being with feelings and allowing them to move through. So, um, so Ajahn Suchito, who whose teachings I've been working with over these past 10 weeks of teachings, says that uh, there are three aspects. Uh, I'm just gonna name them. So paying attention, paying attention in the moment, meeting what arises and including it all. So, so the mindfulness, paying attention in each moment and meeting what arises, so not turning away and, and including it, not rejecting So I'll, I'll read a quote by, um, from Ajahn Suchito, which uh, I really liked. As a perfection then, equanimity is an intention or mental muscle rather than a feeling. It's the big heart that can steadily hold feelings and perceptions in full awareness without getting rocked by them. And it strengthens into a mind state when it is supported by other parami. So, so we can cultivate equanimity as an intention to be with things as they are. And then we can, as we bring that intention and cultivate it, it we draw upon other parami um, practices of mindfulness um, and and we uh, and it becomes a, a quality of heart and mind that we inhabit uh, so that we actually feel that that sense of, sense of groundedness. It said that um, at his moment of awakening, the Buddha looked back on his many lifetimes and, and had insight into them. He, he remembered them. He saw how they arose and pass away, passed away. He saw the different ways that um, he was, he was blinded. He saw through the ignorance and the reactivity that that had blinded him in his previous minds, um, previous rebirths, and all the causes and conditions that had uh, given rise to these births. So that was a that was a deep insight, and and uh, and in his. In his uh, teaching, Ajahn Suchito asks, can you look at maybe your life or, or maybe just a part of your life, like maybe a project or maybe a relationship or some, some segment of your life and without drawing, being drawn into a sense of being a star or, the, or a sense of being a victim. See how everything arose from causes and conditions. See how, um, there was perhaps some deep learning that happened in that part of your life that, that now enables you to be present in your life with greater compassion, with greater understanding, with greater skill, with more acceptance of yourself, 
or acceptance of others. You know, or maybe that reflection could be an opportunity to, to open to a deeper acceptance of that's just how it was. That's just how it unfolded. So I'll just, maybe I'll just um, end with uh, repeating Heather Sundberg's verse. All things arise and pass away and they aren't I or mine. May I trust in the unfolding of life. May I hold joys and sorrows with equanimity and balance, wisdom and compassion. So, so, As you um, prepare yourself to begin the formal meditation practice, perhaps just take note of how, in a way, equanimity enabled you to arrive at the sitting today. Whatever came up in your life, whatever uh, events, uh, distractions, or responsibilities came up, there was a certain steadiness uh, to follow through on the intention to be present in practice and to practice in the sangha. And so that steadiness, part of that, perhaps we can understand as uh, the steadiness of mind and the balance of mind of equanimity. And so we can gather the attention and energy of the mind as we begin our sit. And that steadying the energy of the mind, gathering in awareness of the breath, awareness of the body, a sense of steadiness within the rise and fall of sound, of breath, of body sensations. We can understand this as the, the foundation of equanimity. Finding steadiness within changing circumstances having the steadiness to observe, to know the, the nature of change, the 
of all of our experience. And the steadiness is, as well as being energetic, it is also an aspect of the mind, which has this intelligence and insightful knowing, knowing of what is arising and that it is arising and manifesting and passing away. That it is arising from causes and conditions. So not claiming it as me or mine. And it is this very fine and delicate balance of not tuning out what is being felt, what is being known, not turning away. And at the same time, not getting hooked into reactivity. So there's a kind of a trust, a confidence that we cultivate and that we find in ourselves. To be with things as they are. To let our heart be touched And to know that there's nothing that we need to fix or to react or to be or to do.
bringing mindfulness to a sense of the whole body can be a, a very helpful base to ground ourselves. In the Satipatthana Sutta, the Buddha says to cultivate mindfulness just in overall sense of there is this body, there is a body. sense of the whole body. And in the bare presence in this body, one can have an awareness of the rise and fall of breath, of sound, of sensation. thoughts, emotions, And let this sense of the whole body, awareness of the body, sitting or lying down, whatever position it is, allowing the sense of the body to be light, not as a solid, fixed, hard-edged thing, as, a, as an energetic field, as a system, alive. that it can be our home base. Resting in the awareness of this body.
as thoughts begin to come and the body begins to calm, if it is, without any sense of judgment or it should be this or it should be that. We could perhaps turn the attention to the knowing itself. What is this knowing? Who is knowing? What is knowing without looking for an answer? Just mindful of knowing. Allowing the attention to rest in mind itself, in knowing itself. We're turning inward and resting. Resting in awareness without reaching outward to any sensation or thought, just resting in awareness itself. And if that's not resonating, for your practice right now. Letting the intention of equanimity, just being with what is, what is present in your practice in this moment, with this breath. And as we come to the end of the sitting, let's honor the blessings of our practice, taking in whatever moments, stillness, presence, open-heartedness, balance, equanimity, love, compassion, joy, have arisen and we can offer the blessings of our practice to all beings with the heart of equanimity including those who are young old rich poor near and far those who are being born and those who are dying those who are experiencing abundance and those who are experiencing deprivation and want. All beings, all humans, all creatures.
creatures of the air, of the waters and the land. May our lives and our practice serve and support the happiness, well-being and liberation of all beings. <laughs>